Welcome to Spry Online for February 28th. I'm Ken Lawyer, lead pastor of Spry Church, and we're so glad you're joining us. Here at Spry, we offer two worship styles, contemporary and traditional, and our online service today includes some of each. All that we do here at Spry is about celebrating the goodness of God and helping people come alive in Jesus. We come into the presence of the Lord today expecting to encounter Jesus, to hear Him as He speaks to us through the music, reading, and message, and to offer Him our prayers and our praises. Let's worship the Lord together. Welcome to Spry Online. We invite you to worship with us at home.
Hi, I'm Luke Harbaugh, the campus pastor at the Pine Grove campus. And before we pray, we're going to set aside a moment to light these candles. Uh, and what we're doing during this season is we're lighting these candles as a reminder of God's presence with us. And if you look at the scriptures, uh, God's presence is often demonstrated through the presence of fire. Uh, God was present with the Israelites as they walked through the desert in a pillar of fire. Uh, it was God's fire that consumes the burnt offerings. It's God's presence uh, through the Holy Spirit that is demonstrated with tongues of fire in the New Testament, and the list goes on. And so as we light these candles, let's take a moment to just pause, reflect, and remember God's presence here with us today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we continue in our worship today, we pause for a moment just to remember that you are here with us. We remember our dependence upon you, our need for your grace. And we pray, Lord, that during our time, you would guide us more deeply into your presence. Through the words that we say, through the songs that we sing, through the scripture that we read and the reflections we hear, Lord, we pray that you would draw us closer to yourself. Draw us deeper into who you are. Draw us deeper into holiness and righteousness. And allow us, Lord, to be more in step with you because of our time together today. Lord, as this fire burns in front of us, we pray that you would burn within our hearts. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, Splash Kids. Miss Andrea here. This weekend in worship, we will be reading from Mark chapter 10, learning about God's mercy through the story of Jesus healing the blind man, Bartimaeus. I want to ask you a few questions quick, and if you can answer yes to any of them, I want you to raise your hand. Have you ever borrowed something from a friend and then broken it or lost it? Have you ever snuck food like candy or cookies when you weren't supposed to? Have you ever disobeyed your parents? It's okay. You can put your hands down now. And just know that we have all done wrong things. But when we do wrong things, we can count on God to forgive us if we're really sorry for what we've done. God isn't cruel or mean, and he doesn't punish us in the way that we might deserve. We say that God has mercy on us. For the lesson, head over to Facebook and find the Splash Kids Ministry page. And if you haven't joined the page already, just click on the request to join and you'll be let in. Fold your hands and bow your head and say a quick word of prayer with me. God, we praise you and thank you for being merciful to us and for doing so many good things in our lives. God, we mess up every day, but you are merciful to us. You offer us love, forgiveness, and mercy, and you do what's best for us, so we will grow into responsible, loving, mature people. Thank you for loving us so much and for your mercy. Amen. See you later. Hi, I'm Chris Kenna. I'm the worship and student pastor here at Spry Church. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Ephesians, and it's Ephesians chapter 5 verses 8 through 20. And this is what it says. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. And this is why it says, Wake up, sleeper. Rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because these days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, 
always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Amen. He now admits he was abusing the Bible. My friend Eric had come to believe that the Bible was an irrelevant, outdated book of rules. He also saw it as a tool for manipulation. He writes this, To my skeptical eyes, the Bible looked no different than any other old religious text. I assumed it was written by religious men for the purpose of maintaining social order. Cynical to the core, I figured, what better way to manipulate the masses than with the promise of eternal paradise as a reward for good behavior and the threat of unrelenting hellfire for those who get out of line? Now, that's not exactly the message of Scripture, but he didn't care. As a political activist with a chip on his shoulder, he found the Bible to be a familiar and formidable weapon in the war against what he perceived to be Christian bigotry. Cherry-picking verses that supported his semi-socialist views became his favorite pastime. He says, I suppose it never occurred to me how convenient it was to leave out all the other parts, passages about personal repentance and Jesus' mandate to make disciples of all nations. I enjoyed sarcastically reminding people who actually believed this stuff that Jesus said to love your enemies and that they're supposed to love Iraqis and abortion doctors. Of course, I never stopped to consider my own hypocrisy. Conservative Christians were my mortal enemies, but I felt no love for them. Eric is now a pastor in Houston with a vibrant ministry helping all kinds of people learn that their stories matter to God. So what happened to him? His life was transformed through an encounter with Jesus. He became convinced that Jesus is who he says he is, not just a man, but truly God, not a dead rabbi, but the living Lord of history, the Savior who can redeem our brokenness and make us whole, the one called Emmanuel, God with us. Eric also writes this, If Jesus is God, I knew I would have to revisit the Bible. For 13 years, every time I opened that book, I expected to find something to disagree with, something to hate. But once I realized that Jesus loved the Bible, that He never criticized or contradicted it, and that He quoted it often, I knew I had more work to do. I couldn't continue calling Jesus my God while feeling such animosity toward His Word. My friend Eric has written a book defending the book he once loved to hate. And he doesn't just defend the good parts either. He shares his story in the book called Scripture and the Skeptic, a resource I highly recommend. The Bible has certainly been misused by many people throughout history. It's been used to justify slavery and racism, as well as the subjugation of women. The Bible does not support everything it reports. When the biblical writers describe human behavior, they don't flinch. They don't shy away from the depth of human sin or the brutality with which people sometimes treat one another. If our reading of the Bible leads us to hate others and mistreat others, we're not reading the Bible the right way. But the response to misuse of the Bible shouldn't be to lay it aside and stop reading it. The response should be to use it properly. The proper use of the Bible leads us to the love of God. It leads us to encounter God and to love God and love others, to grow in love for God and love for our neighbors. That message is so desperately needed today. That's why, as I mentioned last week, in the midst of the stresses, hurts, and struggles in our world, this is our calling as a church, to help people find hope and healing through God's Word. What a great time to be the church! We can experience that hope and healing, and we can help others find hope and healing through God's Word. It's what my friend Eric found. It transformed his life. You and I can also encounter the living God, and one of the most powerful resources we have for doing so is Scripture. We don't read the Bible just to learn about God. We also read the Bible to get to know God in a deeply personal way. Getting to know God is like getting to know a person. When you get to know someone, that person becomes a part of your life, and you become a part of that person's life. When you get to know God, you enter into the divine life, and God enters into your life. Scripture is a place where God and humans meet. If we seek the Lord in the pages of Scripture, He will meet us there. The Bible isn't just a resource for information, but also for transformation. That's the main idea behind our inspired series, which we began last week and continue today. Through the centuries, Christians have developed ways of engaging Scripture for growth in the knowledge and love of God. 
Today we're going to explore three of these ways and look at some time-tested wisdom about reading Scripture for the life of faith. Our daughter is really into the story of Harry Potter. She has read all seven books, probably three or four times within the last two months alone. If she had the opportunity to meet J.K. Rowling, the author of those books, she would jump at it. I wonder if you've ever found yourself drawn into a story in such a way that you just keep reading. Imagine yourself absorbed like that by a book or a series of books and then having the opportunity to talk with the author. The Bible is written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit with God as the author and we can talk with God. That's what prayer is, talking with God. Invite God into your reading of Scripture. It could just be a simple prayer. Lord, guide my thoughts and fill my heart through this reading. Help me become the person you want me to be. Or you might pause for a silent prayer, asking God to speak to you. In a word, this short video tells us what we need. La, la, la. <coughs> Illumination. Illumination. In context, that video has nothing to do with the Bible. But the word that the minions, those funny-looking characters, sing to us there is crucial for our reading of the Bible. We need God to provide us with illumination. Illumination refers to how the Holy Spirit helps us understand and be faithful to what we read in these inspired texts. Do you currently invite God into your reading of Scripture? Take time before your next encounter with Scripture and invite God into it. The illuminating power of the Holy Spirit leads us through the Scriptures and more deeply into the life of God. Opening the Bible is like turning on the light in a dark room. God's Word is a light to your path. In our passage for today, we read that we were once in darkness, but now we can live in the light of the Lord. Light makes things visible, and the light of Jesus will shine on us. When we read the Bible, we're reading it to encounter God. We're reading for the life of God. Prayer helps us. Another way of inviting God to renew our hearts and minds is through meditation upon Scripture. In the classic book, Celebration of Discipline, Richard Foster wrote, What happens in meditation is that we create the emotional and spiritual space which allows Christ to construct an inner sanctuary in the heart. When we meditate on Scripture, we remove ourselves from the many distractions that can be roadblocks to God's work in our hearts. Meditation is often difficult for most people, including me. Our minds are prone to wander. We are constantly exposed to many different stimuli, TV, the internet, cell phones, other people, and more. We have to be intentional if we're ever to have a moment of peace and quiet. If you try meditating on Scripture and find you are having difficulty concentrating, don't give up. As you focus your mind on the words of Scripture, you'll find it a rewarding practice that takes you deeper in relationship with God. Our children's ministry identifies a memory verse each month that we encourage kids, parents, and really anyone to learn by heart. We've written down the February memory verse on a chalkboard in our living room. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Recently, our son Zeke asked me, Daddy, can you say this backwards? I said, sure. God from comes love for another. <laughs> what he actually meant was, could I turn around and say it without looking? Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. These words express well the purpose of reading the Bible, to know and share God's love to love others as Jesus loves us. There's great spiritual value in reciting a passage like this again and again, letting its meaning sink in more fully each time. Or you could recite it slowly and think about different aspects of this passage. Because love comes from God, we can know God's love and love others. How do you see this in your life? What would that look like for us? Those are the sorts of questions you can ask as you meditate on God's Word. It's one thing to read Scripture, but another to live in the light of its truth. We want to do more than simply read the Bible. We want to internalize it. We want its words to flow through our lives. 
We want it to nourish our souls in the way food nourishes our bodies. Meditation on the text allows us to receive God's words to us at a deep level. We don't just encounter the Bible in the power of the Spirit through personal prayer and reading, but in corporate worship as well. In fact, the Bible found its first uses in worship, and the best worship today will continue to emphasize how God speaks to us together as a community through Scripture. One of the most powerful ways to encounter the words of the Bible is through song. Jewish and Christian traditions have preserved an entire book of songs, or as they are called, psalms. From the earliest days of the church, Christians have sung their faith. Scripture teaches us of the value of singing. Our reading for today says, Be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here's what that can be like. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my God and my shield in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence as well. He will cover over you with his feathers And there under his wings you will find peace And his faithfulness will be your shield That was part of Psalm 91 by Sons of Korah. The lyrics for their songs are taken almost verbatim from the book of Psalms. They are literally singing scripture. And hearing that immediately makes me feel more at peace. Did it have that effect on you too? When we sing our scriptures, not only do we offer praise to God, but we learn the words of scripture. We internalize its themes, and that opens our hearts and minds for God to use these inspired texts to shape us and transform us from the inside out. The early church had this wise saying, often attributed to the fourth century leader, Augustine, the one who sings prays twice. When we sing to the Lord, we become more spiritually alive. Many songs used in worship are rooted in scripture. Take some time this week to consider the words of one of your favorite songs or hymns. Look for connections between those words and specific passages of the Bible. What do you see? God has given us the Bible not just for information, but for transformation. The purpose isn't just to know about God, but to know God. So we pray, we meditate, we sing, we worship, we listen to the Lord speak to us through the Bible, and we respond in faith. It's all for the glory of God. Nicky Gumbel is a pastor in England. Years ago, he went on a trip to Russia. At that time, Bibles were strictly illegal in the Soviet Union. He took with him some Russian Bibles. While he was there, he went to churches and looked for people who seemed to be genuine Christians. Church meetings were often infiltrated by the KGB. This is how he describes what happened. On one occasion, I followed a man down the street after a service. I went up to him and tapped him on the shoulder. There was no one else around. I took out one of my Bibles and handed it to him. For a moment, he had an expression of utmost disbelief. Then he took from his pocket a New Testament, which was probably 100 years old. The pages were so threadbare, they were virtually transparent. When he realized that he had received a whole Bible, he was elated. He didn't speak any English, and I didn't speak any Russian, but we hugged each other, and he started to run up and down the street, jumping for joy. 
When's the last time you were exuberant over the message of a book? Can you imagine jumping for joy over receiving a book? The Psalms, those ancient prayers and songs of God's people, tell us that the words of God are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the comb. Scripture is God speaking to us. Are we listening? How will we respond? How will you respond? Reading the Bible rightly leads us not to become more critical of other people, not to mistreat others or look down on others, but to something infinitely greater and more satisfying, growth in the knowledge and love of God. That's what we were made for ultimately. It's your primary purpose in life, to grow in the knowledge and love of God, to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. And in a special way, that's what happens in worship. We encounter the living God who speaks to us. God really is present in our worship. Jesus promises, where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. In worship, Jesus is in our midst. The words of Scripture read aloud, preached, sung, and shared serve as a pathway into the life of God. The Holy Spirit takes us by the hand and leads us down this pathway as we follow Jesus with joyful hearts and eyes wide open in gratitude to the glory of God. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that you speak to us in the Scriptures. Help us respond in faith and joy, growing in the knowledge and love of God, and always giving thanks to you for everything. We worship you, God. Come, Holy Spirit. Renew us. Transform us. Use us, we pray. We are yours. We offer our lives and our prayers to you in the name of Jesus, our Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In just a few weeks in our inspired sermon series, we're going to explore the idea that the Bible is uh, 66 books with one story being told. Um, now, I don't know if you remember the idea of Cliff's Notes. Um, they were popular when I was in high school, and they were good ways of kind of getting summaries of books uh, without having to read the whole thing before the book report. Now, some students use them to cheat, but for me, it was just a good way of getting the high points, of course. Uh, but one way to think about the Apostles' Creed, which we're going to say in a second, is kind of the Cliff's Notes of the Christian faith. Uh, it's a good way of hitting the high points of everything that we believe. And so I invite you again to say these words as a way of summarizing what it is we believe that God has done for us in the world. And so I ask, Church, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you for all the ways you love our neighbors and serve our community. Our Link Community Youth Center recently shared a webinar on mental health and the pandemic. It's a 17-minute conversation with a local expert who shares insights and practical suggestions. It's a great resource for parents, grandparents, students, and really anyone at any stage helping us learn more about mental health and wellness during this time. You can view this video online at thelinkyork.com and click on the social media icons, and we encourage you to check it out. This is the first in a series of community conversations led by The Link, addressing important issues that affect our community. Your support as a church helps us reach out to the community in this way and so many other ways, spreading the hope and peace and love of Jesus, and we want to say thank you. 
We invite you to respond to God's love by giving to His work. Thank you for your gifts today as we place them in God's hands. You can give online at sprychurch.com by mail or by text using the number on your screen. Or if you'd like to give directly to the work at the Link Community Youth Center, you can go to givetothelink.com. Join us now as we worship through our giving. This song is called What Wondrous Love Is This? I'm going to play it as an instrumental.
Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. If you're new to Spry, please fill out a connection card at sprychurch.com connection. If you leave your contact information, we'll be glad to send you church updates and answer your questions. Here are some ways you can be part of what God is doing in our church and community. We're doing a prayer walk at each of our two campuses this Saturday, March 6th, 10 a.m. at the Pine Grove campus and 10.30 at the School Street campus. Join us for a brief gathering outdoors lasting about 15 minutes with several prayer stations as we pray for God to work in our church and our community. The long-awaited opening of our Pine Grove campus is next week, March 7th. We're so excited to be able to expand our reach as a church to serve our community in this way, and we look forward to what God is going to do. Please join me in praying for God to be glorified in all things. Leading up to Easter, we're delivering a thousand bags of hope to people in our community. Each bag includes Easter candy, an invitation to connect with us this Easter, either in person or online, and a flyer about how we can help our community with food, supplies, and encouragement through our Love Your Neighbor initiative. You can get involved in two ways. First, help us assemble bags on March 14th. We'll do that at each campus, 1010 to 1055 at School Street, and 945 to 1015 at the Pine Grove campus. Sign up at the Connection Center by March 7th, or just show up to help. Second, you can help us deliver bags by taking 10 bags or more and giving them to your friends, coworkers, family, or neighbors. You can personalize the bags if you like by adding an Easter card, crayons or markers for kids, cookies or brownies, etc. Bags will be available starting March 21st. Right now, people need connection and community, including knowing how together we can help our community. Help us share hope with our Love Your Neighbor Easter bags. Now the blessing. May the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen.